Hey everybody, welcome back to Natatorium Knowledge. I'm your host, Eric Knight with Arenda. And today, as he's been in a few other videos of ours, we have the president of Desert Air Dehumidifier Company. This is Keith Corson. Keith, thank you for being with us. Good morning, Eric. We're gonna get right into it. He is a subject matter expert on all things dehumidification and natatorium air physics, circulation, all of these things. So uh, there's a lot of terms that get thrown around and a lot of misunderstandings, I know, because I've misunderstood it. So at a very basic level for the YMCA operator out there, or perhaps the finance director who's wondering why the power bill is so high, but is not an engineer. That's our audience for this video. What is evaporation, condensation, dew point? What are these relationships? And what can a pool dehumidifier do to control that environment? Okay, good question. So let's just talk <laughs> it's, about it's, it's a loaded it's a loaded question. I, it is. Yeah. It let's is. start. Let's start with evaporation. Yeah, let's talk that? about it. Yeah, evaporation is is simply the conversion of liquid water into vapor, and that's what we're talking about. Whether uh, this is what's happening out in in the lakes and ponds of the the earth, why we have uh, uh, storms and why it rains again, it is this continuous process. So. Essentially, what evaporation is is caused by is the absorbance of heat from from a, a source that will allow the conversion from a liquid to a vapor and then escape out of the body of water. Um, one of the the key elements in our indoor pool scenarios is we are heating the pools. We're heating the pools to warm temperatures. There's a lot of energy to allow this conversion to happen. So it's, it actually, as it evaporates, it cools the pool. In fact, almost 85% of the heat loss of a pool is from the evaporative effects. The rest goes through the walls and the floors of the pool. So the bulk mm -hmm. of it is this process that, that is happening. So if we look at this water vapor coming on into the atmosphere, into the air of the pool, we now have the reverse function is when a air goes over a cold surface, let's mm -hmm. talk about your favorite beverage sitting with ice cubes in Charlotte on a day like today. What happens? Well, you have first a, of all, I don't put I, I don't put ice cubes in my beer. <laughs> so let's start there. But, but if I have a beer. cold beer, if I have a cold beer, it starts dripping from the outside. There is the reverse function of, of evaporation and that's condensation. So as the uh, uh, air touches that beer can, mm -hmm. the cold temperature is given up from the beer can to actually convert the water back from air into the liquid form. And in, in essence, air can only hold so much moisture, but it's a function of the temperature. Warmer temperatures can hold more vapor. Colder okay, so is this why, is this like, like in the winter time when I start up my car, everything's foggy and I have to turn on the heat on my windshield? Yeah. What, what, what's going what on? Limited, what limited moisture is there is condensing on that cold surface. And, and so uh, as, as you look at it, it's this temperature. So when you look at your beer can, what you really need to look at is just that layer right by the beer can. It is actually chilling down the air and that air can't hold the moisture anymore. So out it comes from the air. And that would be dew point, correct? That is the dew point of the air where you, you could, you, you're now reaching the point that the air is 100% saturated, 100% so relative, relative humidity, 100% relative humidity. All right. So at the dew point temperature, you have 100% relative humidity. Correct. 
I'm going to ask a lot of these questions because it's it's very confusing. But fortunately for you out there, if you are a facility director or something, you don't have to know all of this stuff. Engineers do, or at least they should. And if they don't understand it for an auditorium, they can consult with manufacturers like Keith's company or any of the other pool dehumidifiers because if they don't know this stuff, they shouldn't be dehumidifying swimming pools anyway. So you you have plenty of resources to actually make sure these things are taken into account. So 100% relative humidity at the dew point temperature, yes? Correct. But we want a pool to be like, what is it, 50% relative humidity? What is Yeah, 50 to 60%. Yeah, we're, we're in the, the mid 80s of air temperature at 50 to 60%. And, and, and what all that's telling me is that within that volume of air, I contain 50% water vapor. Now, as I that's look- That's comfortable. That's, in a pool room it is. If you yeah. were sitting out on your, your deck in full clothes or a suit, at a wedding, you'd say that's not as comfortable. Uh, here, here in Milwaukee, we'll say we were in the dog days of summer. You know, it's hot and humid, and and so when we listen to the weather forecasters, what do they always talk about when they talk about um, summer months? Temperature, heat index, rel Well, they don't say relative humidity. They no, just they say, talk about uh, dew point. They do talk about do dew they? point because they're saying if tomorrow is going to be warm and the dew points are rising it's going to be in the 70 degree dew point you're already sweating because you know what the day is going to be like if be here in in wisconsin we can have that 85 degree day but we're down at a 49 degree dew point extremely comfortable because the moisture content is so low you you brought up the term the heat indices well this is the complicating impact of higher dew points on the human body's inability to to get rid of the heat and and those things so it feels like temperatures I mean, and, and I, I so, live in Charlotte and I'm from the DC area the summertime you know it can get into to the triple digits but usually it's in the in the 90s but it's humid and so it's you fair. sweat before you can get to your car. So, I mean, we're sweating to cool down, but the humidity is really what it is. Cause I can be in Phoenix and it's 106 and I don't sweat for, you know, 15 minutes or I don't feel my sweat cause maybe it evaporates so fast. Is that right? That, that would be an accurate statement there. There's both phenomenons happening, but it is, is the body's reaction to uh, this, this dew point. I consider dew point one of the most critical elements to understand. Uh, you know, you, you talk about Phoenix, when they're talking about 10% relative humidity, when it's 106, what do they also talk about? Fires because it is the driving force for the creation of all the things. It's just a tinderbox out there. When you're in DC or in Charlotte, it's the reverse factor. It is so hot and humid that you, you can't possibly keep yourself from, from sweating. And so as I, I look at the dew points in an indoor pool at 82 degrees and 50% to 60%, we're talking about the mid 60s. 64 to 68 degree dew point so by its very environment it is on the higher side of the comfort zone but what are you wearing when you're in that pool eric i don't want this no. visual but you know okay so you, well swimmers are in swimsuits but coaches are in t-shirts and shorts usually yeah. sometimes they're in pants officials wear um khakis and shoes and, and definitely you can not wearing you can absolutely you could, yeah, and it, because it is the higher dew point uh, uh, condition than most yeah. comfort environments, like an We're, office or a home. But but nobody's wearing a jacket, and nope. and then those who are are actually the swimmers who are just wet. Because when I get out of a pool, my teeth will chatter, and it may be seventy eight degrees in the pool. Or let's say eighty for easy math. It's eighty degrees in the pool. The the air is probably eighty something, eighty two, eighty three, something like that, and it's still really cold, especially if air is blowing on me. So right. why is that like it's it I know it's in the 80s but why am I freezing when that air is blowing on me Well y y even though that you are your your body has heat so literally mm. like the pool water that is giving energy to the pool to evaporate your body is giving energy to the droplets of water to evaporate and as it evaporates it's absorbing the heat from your body which is this term evaporative cooling. 
and you are literally contributing to the water release from your body because of its own heat and until you dry off mm -hmm. that is a continuous impact once you dry off oh uh it's okay in here you don't yeah. you know so but there's no, that so time true. period that's so true and one thing i i knew some of that answer already but you you explained it better um if you're a swim coach or a, a facility manager and everybody wants to talk about swimmers stop peeing in the pool okay i'm going to tell you right now one of the biggest reasons why swimmers pee in the pool is what he just said evaporative cooling is a real thing and we just spent 30 minutes warming up and using our muscles to get ready to actually train the last thing i want to do is hop out for 90 seconds to freeze and start shivering and lose all the work that I just put in because then I'm going to pull a muscle when I train. So it's, and then by the way, if you really want to freeze, go into the air conditioned bathrooms or the locker room. <laughs> That's where it's really cold. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, I, personal experience here, it's, it's freezing cold and I, I don't consider myself a weakling when it comes to this stuff, but it, it is real. It is definitely a lot colder than you might think. And the parents up in the stands and the coaches, they're fine. They're dry. In fact, they might be sweating, but we are not. Even if the pool is hot, when we get out, we actually get very cold. So, so back, back to this. Back, back can get one tie in then to dew point. So now we kind of yeah. understand what dew point is. Dew point is very critical in establishing the actual evaporation rate from the pool as dew point drops. Can you control it? Can you control the, with a, P, with a dehumidifier, can you control the dew point? Absolutely, because what the dehumidifier is doing is creating that cold coil, your beer can, mm -hmm. actually colder than your beer can, to condense out the moisture, remove it from the space, and deliver dry air back to it. So what we're doing is we're balancing the evaporative effect, removing it to maintain a dew point. So if the dehumidifier size properly, it matches the load. You know, I add it, I subtract it. I add it, I subtract it. You're, you're doing this on a continuous basis. I maintain the dew point in the space. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen real quick. And this is a little graphic that I found online. I don't own the rights to this graphic whatsoever. But this is the general thing that we all learned in school, the water cycle. So we have evaporation, sunlight, heat, all that stuff. It creates clouds. And... When it thunderstorms here, it's hot in the summer. We've been having evening thunderstorms almost every day. It's good for my lawn, but what I've noticed in it is the temperature drops like 30 degrees. Maybe not 30, but it drops it's substantially a, in a matter yeah. of minutes. Why does that happen? Well, as the We're water- We're talking about it, this part of the cycle. Yeah, as the water is actually dropping down, it is evaporating, you know? In, in an intense thunder shower, it, it's also some pressure differentials that come into play, but it is evaporating. As it evaporates, it cools the air. And it's, it's part of actually some of the winds that come from these storms that come in, because it's cooling the air so much, it's creating a pressure to drive downward winds. So as we talk about wind shears and planes mm -hmm. having to worry about it, it's, it's this impact of the temperature differential caused by the evaporation and conversion of, of the air, at, of the water as it's dropping down. Um, so it, it's the same phenomenon that you had with your, your, your droplets on your Swim. body as you were swimming. Okay, so in a swimming pool, it evaporates from the pool and then you actually mechanically condense it with a coil and then it precipitates from that coil, dribbles down and currently it goes to waste, but that's pure distilled water. So what's the problem with actually putting that back into circulation? There's nothing in it, right? There, there's absolutely no problem putting it in other than some state codes don't allow you to do it. So I, I would love to say you can go do it, but you need to actually have the engineer look at your state code to see if it's allowed. But it is distilled water. It, it, it is very, very useful. Um, we, we, you eliminate having to refill and all the, you know, you, Eric, you go into the chemical imbalance side of it. Uh, oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, Accumulation, the, your, yeah. your, it, your it, calcium goes up because when it evaporates, all the minerals stay behind. I know that from an outdoor pool. So an outdoor pool will evaporate roughly its entire volume in a year. But how much does an indoor pool evaporate? 
I actually use that same number, a, a one full volume of the pool each year. Um, really? It, yeah, and, and part of it, it, it truly happens it, is that it is a it is a 365 day of pool. You know, how many pools actually operate 365 days in outdoor environments? They're shut down for the winter months, except maybe in some of the southern states. You can actually calculate the evaporation that is happening in the pool, convert it to gallons and compare it to the volume of, of the pool. Um, and so I would say in a hotel pool where they're not very deep, it's guaranteed one volume a year. If you've got a huge diving well or a really deep pool, eh, it might not be quite as, as much because you've got extra volume there. But it is a lot of water per year that is leaving. Well, so that's what a lot of people don't understand. And you've got these really high-end filter systems that are basically sold for better water quality, but really water savings. So in places where wasting water is a big thing, because water is a precious commodity, especially as we grow older on this earth, right? Um, maybe it's something worth lobbying for to actually get this distilled water back in, because I can speak from a chemistry perspective, when evaporation happens, all the minerals are left behind. Um, in outdoor pools, you have problems like stable, over stabilization with cyanuric acid. You don't have that on, on indoor pools, but you do have rising calcium hardness. You have rising salts if you're using liquid chlorine or God forbid an indoor salt pool. Hopefully you don't have that. Certainly not commercially, um, but you're gonna have rising total dissolved solids. If you're introducing pure distilled water upstream of the filter and everything else, I see no harm in that. In fact, that's gonna really, really help not only on water savings, but it's gonna help maintain chemistry longer term. I, I, so I, I don't understand why we're not doing it. Yeah, the actual short answer it, it really comes down because it's not meeting up in the specification that the owners are putting forth. And, and I don't wanna put the burden back on the owners, but there are two different disciplines here. You have your pool guys, the water side, and you have your air guys. And sometimes there's this demarcation that occurs because it's hard to coordinate until someone yeah. tells them you must coordinate and then it's easy. But yeah. if no one is, is saying, I need to take that condensate from wherever the dehumidifier is located and quote unquote, pump it back to where I can, like where the, the surge, filter. Like the surge, the surge tank, tank or something yeah. like that. Yeah. If that little speck doesn't happen, who's going to do it on their own? Well, do so, you think the pH of that water is? Because we know oh, that the condensation of chloramine laden air is very low because it rusts metal very quickly because the chlorides are in it. Because chloramines go airborne, but nothing else really does that we know of. We've actually tested our, our condensate just to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And it is really coming in about a pH of seven, maybe 6.9. Is it really? Yeah, it is not. It is very, very neutral. Uh, as as we go forward, we're not seeing this be an ultra low uh, pH type of uh, uh, water. Well, I, in in my experience, I have seen some of that. I've also tested pH, and there are systems out there with low returns that actually have a lot of chloramines that go through, and that condensation etches concrete. It's like Different. a pH of two. Different story there because that is actually where you've got this high concentration. Again, we, we, were, we need to talk about where the dehumidifier grabs the air from the upper mm -hmm. reaches of the, the pool room. There's less of those chemicals sitting at the higher volume. So it's, it's, a, it's a relative ratio, Eric, to, to understand the low exhaust capture systems are going to see this really chemical rich environment. Well, and, and I'd have to look more into it, but even if a stream of condensation water, which by the way, is the full volume of the pool in a year, roughly. I mean, that's a lot of water coming in, even if it does have chloramines in it, because the trichloramines evaporated, let's say they go back into, into solution. You're talking about putting it in the surge tank. These indoor pools should have a secondary system like ozone or UV or maybe AOP. That's going to destroy those chloramines because it's going to, but you have to almost make sure that rather than the, the bypass loop, which I know you don't really spend much time in the pump rooms, but most of these secondary systems have a bypass loop. So in my thinking, maybe it doesn't go in the surge tank. Maybe it goes first through that bypass loop to get secondary sanitized. We'd have to configure it in the pump room, but I'm sure there's a way to do it because it's ridiculous to throw away that much distilled water, even if it had some chloramines in it.
Yeah. Now with source and capture, you're going to reduce that amount anyway. Right. And Eric, I think the surge tank is actually more than adequate because when you actually look at the volume of water that we're going to be returning relative to the full main pipeline that is, is, is going, the ratio is going to be so small that I, I think that's the proper place to minimize costs. Pay the money for the pump and be done with it. Let the ratios of the condensate to your main filter systems water flow, you're going to be in an actually very, very good uh, uh, situation. Okay, so I'm going to try to summarize this and I want you to correct me where I'm wrong. Evaporation is water vapor that uh, leaves the pool. It, it rises and expands because heat and humidity rise and expand. Therefore, your unit is going to mechanically condense a proportion of that by design uh, on cold coils like my cold beer will get wet. That's condensation, right? Yep. Okay, so that's going to condense. It'd be nice if we could precipitate and put it back in the pool, but there's a lot of moisture that's getting removed. You're also taking heat out of that air and reclaiming it to keep the room's relative humidity between 50 and 60 percent and Correct. you can control the dew point so that the comfort level of the patrons in the place is adequate so that you don't have like a raining ceiling i mean how many times have we been in a pool where it's just condensation and rust everywhere does this have anything to do with why we have to wash windows with supply air it certainly does i mean windows are always going to be the weakest part of the building because we Why? don't have insulative properties to it. I mean, they're limited. So if we talk about a single pane, double pane, triple pane windows, we're getting into the actual insulation properties of the window. You should never have a single pane in a pool. So you it's like my beer, that glass is like the glass of my beer because if it's cold in Wisconsin, that glass is much colder than the wall that has insulation. Correct. And then if you even look at dual pane, there still is, a, it is the coldest portion of the pool room. So what we talk about doing in the design of the ductwork is we want to aim a certain volume of air to flush the windows. We are actually creating a microclimate at the window surface with that warm, dry air. So even if the window is below the dew point of the main pool room, with the flushing air, the air gives this buffer and it is at actually a lower dew point so I don't get condensation on my window. Beautiful. If you have any questions about humidity, uh, why is your pool room so humid? Uh, why does it just feel just muggy in there? Maybe you have a steaming pool if you get in there in the morning or if you just have wet walls, wet ceiling, condensation, any of that, hopefully this helped you address those questions. Keith Corson, president of Desert Air, thank you so much for being our subject matter expert for this topic. Eric, thank you very much. Have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. This has been the Natatorium Knowledge Channel. I'm Eric Knight with Arenda. Hopefully this helped. Take care, everyone.